Hello and welcome to a new calculator tutorial for the TI-84+. Plus. Today we'll be discussing how to work with the binomial probability distributions in the TI calculator. Now I'm going to be doing this again assuming for a TI-84+, Plus, but after I show for the 84s I will also be showing how it will be done if you're using an 83 or if you're using an early version of 84s. The ones that do not have wizards for every single program. Now, uh, so binomial probability distributions. What we're trying to do here is that we have some amount of trials, we have a certain percentage of success that could appear in any of those trials, and we're trying to see how many ways or how many uh, trials do we actually succeed in. So, for example, I like to work with baseball examples in these cases. Say I have 10 different at-bats, and I have a percentage chance of 30% to actually get a hit when I'm on any at-bat. So maybe I want to see what's the probability that I get 4 hits out of those 10 at-bats, which would be above the overall percentage. This would be using the binomial probability distribution, because we either have the success, which is getting a hit, or we have the failure, which is not getting a hit. If we don't have binomial percentages like that, and something that's consistent, because binomial pr probabilities need to be consistent, then we cannot use this. So just be sure to check through that what you're working with is a binomial probability distribution. Now, the way to access this in a calculator, we're going to be accessing the DISTR button here, the one in blue. So I'm going to hit second, VERS, and I get this table of options here. Now you see normal PDF and normal CDF. This will be used later for other concepts. But here, since we're specifically using a binomial distribution, what we're going to do is scroll down until we get to binomial PDF and binomial CDF. We will be using both. Depending on your calculator, they may be this low, they may be at 9 or 10. I think 83s don't have them this low. But binomial PDF and binomial CDF. Now the difference between the two. Binomial PDF is going to just find the probability of a, sp of a specific case. Binomial CDF stands for uh, basically binomial probability that is cumulative. That's what the C stands for. That is cum cumulative. Which means that say I'm looking at the probability that I get 4 hits out of 10 at-bats. The cumulative would find the probability that I get at, at most 4. So any I could get 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So it adds up all the probabilities up to that point. We will be using that, but for other circumstances. Typically, if we're just finding a specific percentage, we can use binomial PDF. So I'll be using binomial PDF here and ask for three values. First, the va number of trials. I said that I was going to be doing 10 at-bats, so I'm going to do 10 here. And I also said that the probability of, of a success, that's what P is asking for, the probability of a success is 30% or 0.3. You can do 0 0.3 or 0.3. Just make sure you don't put 30. The X value then is asking how many successes am I looking for? Well, I asked the question of what's the probability that I get 4 hits out of 10 at-bats. In this case, I'm looking for 4 successes out of those 10 trials. So, I have 10.3 and 4, I hit paste, it pastes onto the main screen. Now if you have an 83 or an old 84, this is what you're going to find. Binomial PDF will paste on the main screen and you'll want three prompts, the number of trials, the percentage of success, and the number of successes, in that specific order. So keep that in mind. Um, but if you have 84s, you don't need to worry about that, it pastes there and you press enter and we get a percentage. This says that I have about a 20% chance of getting four hits in 10 at-bats if my percentage chance of getting a single hit is 0.3 or 30%. This makes a little bit of sense anyway since this would be higher than my probability of success is normally so this seems okay. Now if I wanted to do cumulative I would do the same thing. I'd go to second, vers and I'm going to go to cumulative, which I believe is at B for me, and I'm going to be using the same prompts. It's still going to be asking for trials, it's still going to be asking for the percentage of success, and it's going to be asking for the number of successes. 
So 10, 0.3, and 4. Now again, the difference here, cumulative is going to find the probability of getting a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4. Everything up to this point. The maximum being, well, the number of trials. If I did 10 out of 10, I would should have 100%. But if I do the cumulative, I'm going to get higher than 0.2. I'm probably going to get somewhere around 0.5 or so. Oh, even higher than that. 0.8497. So this is saying that the probability that I get uh, no more than four hits is about 85%, which is pretty good. All right. Now how to do this for better circumstances or when you're trying to make a probability distribution which usually implies that you're doing this a lot of times we don't want to constantly go back to binomial pdf and just plug in a different number than four each time to see the probability of getting a three or a two or a one or a zero getting all these i could do this using list manipulation which we covered in a previous video but i want to do here so i'm going to go into stats and i'm going to be using the same example here so in up to 10 trials, I want to see what's the probability of getting that amount of hits. So um, when I have uh, 10 different trials, I could get somewhere between 0 and 10 hits. Those are all my possibilities. So I'm going to populate list 1 with all of those possibilities from 0 all the way up to 10. Okay, I have 11 options here because I am including zero. But this is all the different possibilities that I could have. Now, what I'm going to do then is find the probability for this and put it into list two. So the probability of getting zero hits in 10 at-bats, the probability of getting one hit in 10 at-bats, again, using the probability of success being 30%. So, again, what I'm going to do, I'm over here in list two, and I want to make sure I hit up and I highlight list two itself so that the prompt on the bottom says L2 equals. It should not say L2 parentheses anything like this. This means you're putting something into the first slot. We want the top, so L2 equals. And I'm going to access binomial PDF like I have before. So I'm going to do second, vers, and I'm going to go down to binomial PDF. Now, because I already did binomial PDF in the past um, and I haven't cleared my memory, um, I believe the binomial PDF will still have my same prompts. Oh no, sometimes, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, all right, so it's blank here still. So the number of trials, we already talked about we're doing 10 trials and the probability of success is still 0.3. However, this is the difference. The x value, the value that we want to plug in for each of these binomials, are the values that we plugged into our list. So this we're going to put in list 1. So I'm going to hit second 1 to put list 1 here. So second 1. This way it'll find the probability of getting 0 hits in 10 at-bats, 1 hit in 10 at-bats, 2 hits in 10 at-bats, and so on and so forth. And do this for all 11 possibilities. When I hit paste, I should see it here, L2 equals binomial PDF, 10 comma 0.3 comma L1. Again, if you're working with 83s, this is what you're going to want to type in, the number of trials, the percentage, and the number of successes uh, in question. We hit enter on this, and we should get all of our probabilities, including the one we calculated earlier for number 4, which is 0 0.20012, or about 20%. Now this is the uh, binomial probability distribution of this and this is nice because it does all the values at once and we didn't need to constantly go back to binomial PDF and just plug in a different value. Um, this And this keeps it in a nice list that we can evaluate uh, all at once. We can see higher percentage values around 3, 4, and 2 hits or so but then it starts to deviate from there and even more importantly when we get down to 9 and 10 it's very unlikely, showing 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth, which means you take that decimal and you throw it back four places. We can even see that, I believe, if we scroll over 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Sometimes it'll say this, sometimes it will actually move the decimal, it depends on your calculator. 
Um, but here, this just means it would be moved back uh, four decimal places, so it would be 0 0.000137, which is a very, very low amount. Um, it should be unlikely to get nine or ten hits and ten at-bats with that given percentage. Great, so this can make the probability distribution very quickly. Now let's see if we want to do the cumulative distribution. Again, the cumulative is going to find the percentage of every value up to that point and in including. So for example, the cumulative probability for three will include all of these probabilities. Um, so it's going to get bigger and bigger. And if we do it right, the last value should be a value of one because that should mean if I add up all these different probabilities together, if it's a true probability distribution, this should add up to 100% of possibilities. So I'm gonna to go to L3, and I'm gonna access uh, probability or binomial CDF, just like I did before for the PDF, and I'm gonna plug in the same values, um, including list one. So binomial CDF, trials, I'm doing 10 trials, doing a 0.3 percentage success, and for list one for my x values. Not list two, because those are my percentages. Now I paste in, and you see binomial CDF here. I hit enter to send it through. It takes a second to calculate through the CDF, but there you go, you see all my percentages here, and it does exactly what we expect. It starts off with 0.2825, then adds the next value to get this one, then adds the next one to get this value, and on and on. It just keeps adding the percentages. So this is helpful to say what's the probability that I get um, at most seven hits. Well, there's a 0.9984 chance that I get at most seven. And maybe I want to look at greater than seven, then I can use complements and take this 99.841% chance away from 100 to find what's greater than seven. So you can do this, use this for a lot of different circumstances. It's rather helpful. Um, but always, if you do it right, the last value should be one because the number of successes and the number of trials at that point are the same and it's included every value up to it. So it should be all 100% of values. Great, with that, that's everything that you need to know to use binomial PDF and binomial CDF in a TI calculator. Uh, this list method is incredibly helpful if you're trying to make probability distributions, so I highly recommend testing this out a few times for yourself and getting used to the, uh, the stigma here, uh, working through all the different programs. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave any questions in the comments below. Or if you're one of my students, feel free to just come up and ask me the question. Uh, but with that said, I will see you in another video.